He is a Navy veteran, a current defense policy expert, and former Bush appointee. And the topic is uh, Kavanaugh. And, of course, the ceremonial uh, confirmation last night and the narrow confirmation over the weekend of now Justice Brett Kavanaugh marked a major political victory for the president, and it's beginning a new battle for Democrats within their own party because there is a uh, a far-left faction of the party that's calling for a potential impeachment of Kavanaugh. Don Bramer, good morning. Um, pretty much hey. of a, a bit, a bit of a reach, don't you think? Well, it is a bit of a reach. You know, I I looked this up just to check. Uh, only once in our history as a country has there been an attempt to impeach uh, a justice, and, and that failed. Um, far chance that the Dems take the House and was able to start this proceeding. Then it has to go to the Senate before it ever moves forward, and. Will that happen? As especially, yeah, no. I think that the Senate will will lose its majority. No, I actually think the Senate will gain a few seats. So it's it's a great talking point. You know, Maxine Waters and her crew—they've been talking about impeaching the president since 2018. Um, it's just it's a, a talking point to try to, to motivate uh, and yeah, fuel yeah. The, the vile hate that they I, continue I, to thrive off. I don't of. know about you, Don, Don. You had to look it up. So. Um, I had never heard, I mean, we've heard impeachment used with Clinton. We've heard it used uh, here in this case. I even think there was some that were talking about the impeachment of George W. Bush um, and, of course, Nixon. But I've never heard of the ability to impeach a a Supreme Court justice, although there's got to be something in place to allow for for, a lifetime appointment. Yeah, if something went badly wrong. But um, uh, I've never heard of it before. Yeah, it's it's in you know uh, there's a there's a part of the Constitution that sets it aside, and like I said, it it was tried once. Um, I believe it was just before the Civil War that it was tried, yeah. and, and of course, you know, it didn't happen. No, don't you think? Um, and, and here's a scenario: Had the Democrats done what they should have done, and and take this woman's accusation and bring it forward back in July before the president had had nominated Kavanaugh. But he's on the short list. Probably a pretty good chance that everybody would have huddled around and been like, okay, I'm not sure there's a cloud over here, and we don't know if it ever happened or not, but maybe we ought to pick somebody else this time. That probably could have happened, but instead they waited, they sat on it, they wanted this big October surprise. And and do you think it has backfired uh, when we look to the midterms? I think it has backfired, and it shows completely how they mishandled the situation. Diane Feinstein sat across the table from Judge Kavanaugh, yeah. sitting on this letter, and did not mention it. That shows what kind of poor leadership there was. If anything, if I was a Democrat, if I was a, a, a young woman, I would be mad at my party right now because all they did was exploit Miss Ford. They used her. They treated her like a pawn just to get the medias and everybody hyped up. And as soon as the vote was cast, we haven't heard a word. They yeah, tossed yeah. her out because she served no more of a purpose. Yeah. Uh, now, so I would say that if the midterms were held today, I would really believe there's an advantage to Republicans. The problem is, though, the, the president still likes to tweet and talk. So my question, Don, is going out and saying this woman's a liar, trashing her uh, uh, politically, Let's forget the moral, but politically, you're only energizing Democrats, which is not good for Republicans in the midterm. Do you agree with that? I do agree. I, uh, you know, this administration has done a lot of good, and as, as much as I'm a fan of, of our successes and our wins, you know, some mornings I just I wake up and I, I fear, you know, what what are we going to tweet about today? Yeah. Um, because it's I think sometimes we we do stand in our own way, and I. You know, I know it energizes one side of the base, but it does it does fuel the Democrats, and um, and it's going to be a tough race. I think, you know, the one thing he is doing good is these rallies, getting people energized, getting yeah, them motivated, yeah. uh, getting them, you know, getting them to vote because you got to vote. And the one positive out of all of this, if you can find one, is it energizes both sides. You know, let's get people back to the polls um, because that's when you see, you know. People who you know hate this administration and the violence. Well, how many of them actually went to the polls? Right, you can't, right. You yeah. can't gripe about it if you if you don't participate. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, but, the one advantage that uh, the president has, or the Republicans have, is uh, Republicans vote. 
And that's we, why there's President Trump today. Well, we do. And I think you're going to see a lot more of us out there voting. Um, you know, the one, I guess the one, I mean, at least the president talks about creating jobs. I mean, I didn't know that being a paid protester was a job. But maybe we count that in our numbers. Okay. So, so there's just one more job, one, one, one less person job. on the unemployment line. All right, Don Bramer, we appreciate uh, your time and your service. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a great day.